We're affected by the state of the oceans, whether or not we eat the fish, it's affecting our lives. You cannot have healthy human beings if you don't have a healthy biosphere. And the state of the oceans is an indication of how healthy that biosphere is. My first memory from childhood is going with my dad camping. Actually, it wasn't the ocean, but it was in the interior and we were going fishing. And since that time, fishing and fish have been a huge part of my life. I remember vividly, my father would say, okay, we're gonna go and catch sturgeon now. And we'd whip over to New Westminster and we would catch sturgeon without any problem. We would fish for halibut right off Spanish banks. And right up until very recently, there were salmon out in the sound here that we would go out and catch. In my lifetime, I've seen enormous changes. The abundance of sea life that I took for granted when I was a child is just not there. I think of my youngest children now. When they were born, they had no idea that there used to be a Vancouver Sun Salmon Derby right off Spanish banks and there would be hundreds of thousands of dollars of prizes for the biggest fish. And that was canceled many years ago because there weren't any salmon left. My children have grown up never knowing that salmon were once abundant right here off the shores of Vancouver. My daughter, she and I used to go fishing right off Kitsilano Beach and we would catch flounders until one day we caught flounders and around the, the fins there were bumps and she said, Daddy, Daddy, what are those? And I thought they were parasites. We took them back to the house and I cut one open and I thought there would be a worm or something. They were tumors. Those fish that are in there are telling you, they're the canaries in the coal mine, telling us the way that we treat this planet. I grew up as a, a teenager in London, Ontario in the 1950s. And there was one fish store in all of London. It was a city of about 70,000 people at that, that time. And when you walked in, it smelled like, it was just, the fish were not well taken care of. And so you kind of walked in there and ordered the fish and then walked out because fish were not a major part of the diet of Canadians. After the war, uh, when Japan and Japanese foodstuffs began to spread around the world, people discovered sashimi, and they discovered a whole different relationship with fish, which is, if you eat a fresh, raw tuna, it ain't nothing like what you open a can and find. It's a different creature. And our relationship and our valuing of fish then, not only as this kind of Epicurean delight, just the, the, the taste, but suddenly we discover omega-3 and that this, this is a very, very healthy kind of creature to eat. Suddenly there's been this explosion then in eating of fish and that has had a huge impact on the fleets that go out now to take the fish and the ocean populations are dramatically dropping. A lot of young people come to me and say, what can I do to, to save the environment? And I say, look, being an environmentalist is not about being a, an expert or a professional. It's a way of seeing the world. Follow your heart because we need people who are plumbers, we need garage mechanics, we need poets and artists and sing. We need everyone in society to see the world in a different way and bring their expertise and knowledge through the window of that different perspective. If the oceans are rich with life, guess what? We are better off because we benefit from it.